Welcome YouTube to another episode of D&D Fridays. Today we got a pretty fun episode, I think. We're going to do another character deep dive. Um, this time we're going to take a look at how would you build Yoda from Star Wars. But um, before we get that, definitely don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification button, and comment on down below what you think of this Yoda build. But without further ado, let's get back to the Backwards talking green little friend that everybody knows and loves. All right, let's do it. What we, so what we have today is, um, so starting off with level one, um, I decided to go with a forest gnome wizard level one. Um, partially because with forest gnomes, you have intelligence or advantage on saving throws with Intelligence, Wisdom, and Charisma versus Magic, so that's good. And plus, I think that gnomes kind of fit the stature and everything of Yoda. <laughs> <laughs> and then the reason why I, I went with Wizard was um, I'm thinking of going, for the most part, pretty much Bladesinger. Mm. Although the option could be for Eldritch Knight if you rather go with Eldritch Knight. That's a viable option, but but I think Blade Singer is a great a great class for for Yoda. Yeah, I I, I like the Blade Singer option here. Yeah. So a couple of um, things. So so we did start off with the Sage background because I felt like that's one of the most thematic backgrounds for Yoda. Um. And then, of course, I think Arcana fits him quite well, and I think Perception fits Yoda quite well. Yep. Um, I think those are two of the best skills for Yoda in terms of thematics. Mm -hmm. And then we definitely want to start off with a pretty good dexterity. Um, I definitely want to put our plus two into intelligence. And we're going to be evening out our intelligence and our constitution with some feats later on. So that, so not too much to really um, t say per about a uh, about Yoda so far. It's just regular wizard level one. Yep. Um, the one thing to note though is we want to definitely pick up either Boomin Blade or Green Flame Blade. It's up to you. I just um, decided to start out with Boom and Blade. Um, as a Forest Gnome, you do get Minor Illusion for free, so that's good. And Minor Illusion is a good cantrip, anyways. It is a good. And it plays into uh, him using the Force a little bit, so. Yeah. And I've got a couple of good spells, like I think. Um, absorb elements and shield are, I think, are should be must haves for wizard. But I think detect magic and find familiar are two thematic choices for Yoda as well. And they're pretty decent rituals by themselves as well. So, not too bad. Um, the rest you could really pick, I say, whenever you want. But other than that, I think that. For the most part, not nothing too out there at the moment. Pretty straightforward. Yep, I would agree. So now we're going to take a look at what Yoda would look like as a level 5 character. We're thinking about going 5 levels now. So for the Arcane Tradition, of course, we're going to want to go Bladesinger. Not Scribes, but Bladesinger. <laughs> so we... We do get um, proficiency in light armor and a one-handed melee weapon, as well as the performance skill, if we don't already have it. So, light armor is helpful. We can eventually get that studded leather armor, so that that's going to be nearly as good as mage armor. If your GM will allow it, then if you can get your hands on a glamoured studded leather, then you pretty much have mage armor without having to use the spell slot. But for the one-handed um, melee weapon, I think there's two choices that we can go to go with. You could go with, I think you could go with a short sword. 
that's an option. Or a rapier, I think it depends on if you want to just be a one-hander or if you want to go for that two-handed um, fighting style, per se. But I think for Yoda, we'll, we'll definitely want to go with the rapier as we're going with a one-handed weapon because there's not a lot of Jedi in mainstream, I should say, that two-handed, that two hands, except for Ahsoka Tano. But mm. I think all the other big name mainstream Jedi just wield a single lightsaber to my knowledge. The majority of them only get, only uh, wield a single lightsaber. Ironic though that when Lucas first created the, the Jedi, he wanted the lightsaber to be a, a two-handed weapon. That's why you see Obi-Wan in the original use both of his hands. That has slowly changed over the years as Star Wars has, has uh, uh, grown, but so I, I think from a depending on how traditionalist you are, you could you know make your choice here. But I think with with how the the Jedi are currently portrayed, I think rapier makes makes sense here too. Yeah. And since we're on the topic of lightsabers, um, this wouldn't be guaranteed, but I would definitely say talk with your GM, and if your GM is willing to buy into this concept. I think the the best magic item that you should definitely go for first is the Sunblade. Because that <laughs> screams lightsaber to me. It definitely screams lightsaber. That is true. The best mechanical thing of a Blade Singer, though, is the Blade Song. So basically, as a bonus action, you can pop it. Um, and for a minute, up to your proficiency bonus number of times, you basically have a 10-foot walking speed increase, advantage on acrobatics check, and you gain a bonus to constitute or concentration saves and AC equal to your int mod. So that is really good because you're taking your primary um, ability score and adding on to a lot of different very important things as a wizard, which are patching up your concentration saves and patching up your pitiful AC. So you're really sure up your defense is more than a lot of other wizards can. So it really says that things like Warcaster and things of that nature is not as important to get early on as with just about every other wizard. So that's definitely pretty good right right there. Yeah, yeah. any boost you can get with that AC is going to be, be very, very nice. So, And for the ability score improvement, we have a couple of different choices, but I think the choice that we should definitely do is to take care of that intelligence modifier first, since we have an odd score in it. So the thing I want to do is to go for a feat. And it should be pretty obvious which feat I'm going for, but the telekinetic intelligence feat. So it's going to 18 out our intelligence, get the mage hand, which is a good cantrip. And as a bonus action, we could potentially tel telekinetically shove or pull a creature five feet that screams the force to me yeah so i think yep. that this is a must must have for yoda yep agreed so let's take a look at uh, what we're looking like now so with that 18 um, intelligence we're basically going to have a plus five to our concentration saves when you're blade singing and combine that with our dexterity, assuming that we have a studded leather armor, which honestly by level five you should. It's not that expensive and it's pretty common. But with studded leather, you and under blade song, you should have an AC of 19, which is which pretty much means that you're rivaling fighters and paladins and whatnot at this level, which is insane. Yes. And then um, at some point, if you can, pick up a rapier or short sword, whichever one you went with, so you can mix it up in melee um, if you wish. Um, just, I would probably say, preface this with kind of like Yoda as well, you probably will be mixing it up with actually getting in, swinging your sword in melee, as well as actually staying back and using the force and doing wizardy stuff with it. 
So definitely keep that in mind and depending on what situation you're in, it definitely go gravitate to one or the other. Yep. And I don't mean that literally because we're not playing a Graviturgy wizard. <laughs> But to take a look at some spells that we're going to be um, taking a look at. Um, so we do have access to second and third level spells as well. I think a couple of good spells that might be potentially useful um, as maybe Tasha's Mind Whip might be interesting. But um, I think Suggestion is very Yoda-like or Jedi-like, per se, as they use the Force to plant and suggestion as these are not the droids you are looking for type of thing. Yeah, I, I think suggestion is the only choice here, honestly. <laughs> There's a couple others that I could potentially see. Maybe locate object or maybe hold person, maybe. I, I could see hold person for sure because I think that plays sort of into the the force thing a little bit too. Yeah, I I could also see maybe detect thoughts, um, potentially. Um, I'm really only going off of that one scene and was it episode three I think where Yoda was pretty much talking to Anakin and he was sensing some troubling thoughts, but. I mean, I guess you you could make the argument that detect talk, detect thoughts mimics the I've felt a disturbance in the force um, theme there. Uh, I, I think Luke, you know, it's right there on the edge. Um, I think you could probably, you know, you could potentially take it, but I would probably not if if I was the one making the choice. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. It's like kind of, it's kind of like right on that cusp. It could go either way. Yeah, yeah. For third level spells, um, let's see what what can actually be something. Maybe like intel intellect fortress might be a on the cusp option. Mm -hmm. Um, de depending on the Jedi or the Sith person that you go with. Lightning Bolt might be yeah. on that cusp. Although I feel like Chain Lightning would be a bit more thematic. Mm -hmm. um, let's, let's see what else. Um, maybe something like, um, like a Thunder Step or maybe a Misty Step from second, um, from second level that may be right on the cusp mm -hmm. of stuff. I kind I kind of like the the thunder step a little bit because it, there's you're not disappearing and reappearing, you're pushing people out away from you essentially, right? Which feels a little bit more using your environment and the force of the environment to to make space. That sounds that sounds logical. Yeah, and then. This probably isn't super thematic, but we're a cat. We're a caster that can cast um, counter spell, so I'm always going to suggest <laughs> counter spell, even though it's not the most thematic thing. You're never not going to take counter spell when you have an opportunity, Nakai. <laughs> <laughs> I think about the only time I probably wouldn't pick up counter spell as Yoda is if there's at least one or two other people in the party that have had it that already has counterspell then I might say all right let me stick with um, thematics here but if I'm the only one that can count cast um, counterspell I'm like eh I'm a wizard I have plenty of things I can write down in the spell book let me pick up counterspell sure but um, other than that um, I think else is pretty wizard wizardly um, nothing too out of the ordinary at um, else so let's take a look at what a level 10 sort of character is going to feel like for Yoda so we get a few things so first off we get an extra attack just like the fighter 
The only difference is we can replace one of the attacks with the cantrip. So a cool little nifty thing with this is you could always, um, if you can get advantage, great, but boom and blade, stab again, then bonus action to telekinetic feet to potentially shove them away five feet. Mm -hmm. Now the enemies have to move if they want to get up and attack you unless they have some sort of ranged option. Sure. So that's a cool little nifty combo that, that you have there. Also, we get another ASI. Honestly, to me, I would say definitely um, try to get that intelligence up to 20 ASAP because that's going to really fuel your your wizard spell attack rolls, your wizard's um, save DC, and all of your blade song features. Mm. Um, so you're going to get that extra plus one to your AC and your um, and your constant or concentration saves when, when you're blade singing. So I think trying to get that blade song to, or that intelligence to level to 20, I think that should be probably the most uh, priority for a blade singer, personally speaking. Can't, can't really argue against that, so. <laughs> we do get song of defense. When you're blade singing, you can use a reaction to expend a spell slot, reduce damage by five times that spell slot. I think this is a mixed bag thing. Um, usually, absorb elements, shield, or counter spell is going to be better, but there are some cases where song and defense is going to be an, a good option, like maybe you got natural 20 with something so song of defense is going to help mitigate that so it's a useful thing in some cases but you're probably going to be using like shield or counter spell or something a lot more often awesome. let's take a look at what this thing actually looks like or should i say what our little green friend looks like and that was probably a not so great Palpatine voice. <laughs> so we do have that um, plus five. So while blade singing, we're pretty much going to have a 20 AC before any other magic items or shield or something. So that is pretty good. And we're going to have a plus six concentration save. So that's going to be pretty good to help keep our concentration spells going so I think that's going to be pretty good we still only have 52 HP we're going to somewhat fix that a little bit later but that's something to keep in mind going to be hard to hit but you're still a wet paper bag yep so taking a look at spells we do get 4th and 5th level spells now um, so let's take a look at what we can actually do so with fourth level spells, let's see what actually fits, I guess. Uh, a Yoda. Uh, depending on on your on your take of things, maybe like a storm sphere if you're actually playing more of a Palpatine or something like that. Sure. But um Honestly, for a Yoda, I'm not really seeing a whole lot of thematic fourth level spells. What's your thoughts? Yeah, I, I, you could make a small argument for hallucinatory terrain, but I, I agree with you. I think in general, there's probably not a lot of thematic uh, spells at this at this level. No. So that, this probably would be one of those levels where I would say probably go for something that either piques your interest or go for something optimal, like eh, maybe a dimension door, I guess. For fifth level spells, let's see what we can actually pick up potentially from, from this. I think maybe Bixby Hand could potentially be on that cusp of being thematic. Sure. Um, you can kind of thematically say that, yeah, I'm going to use the force to really grab somebody with this big speed, big bee's hand or something like that. Sure. 
Um, maybe Dominate Person could be on that list as well, as it's kind of like one of those suggestion type of things, but for humanoids. So I yep. could potentially see a Dominate Person. Yep. I, could, I can definitely see um, Hold Monster for sure, though. I think mo Modified Memory has a slight argument to be made about it too, right? It's the same thing that we said about um, the third level spell. I believe it was a third level spell. Um, I can't I can't remember which one it was. But I, I think there's a small you know, a, a small argument to be made there, right? If you can suggest something to somebody you could potentially even modify their memory a little bit. So there, there is that. Mm -hmm. um, I think Scrying Scrying's probably a contender here. Um, yeah, I can see I can see scrying, and I guess maybe not as much as scrying, but maybe legend lore as well. Potentially, yeah. Um, one thing that I do see though is telekinesis. Yep, I think telekinesis probably. And that also kind of reminds me of, uh, I think it's second level for Levitate. I think that can also fit as well. Oh, but yeah, Levitate, I guess, would probably fit there too. Yeah. And I guess my, maybe not as thematic as some of the other stuff, but I guess maybe Synaptic Static could be on, on that line threshold. Sure. Since you're kind of like, messing and dealing mind damage if you really focus in on it. Mm -hmm. But uh, but I think the other stuff is more Yoda-like. I think if we're building like a Palpatine or a Vader or something like that, I would definitely say Synaptic Static is one of the first choices. Yeah. Yep. But much easier to build a Sith than a the Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so overall, not too bad. Level, level 10. Uh, yeah. yeah. Let's take a look at um, level 15 and see what Yoda Man is looking like. Mm -hmm. So we do get a few things. So one thing is we get Song of Victory, add our in bonus to our weapon damage rolls. We're probably not going to be meleeing as often now as we do get some higher level slots, but when we do actually get in there and attack with our sword, that's going to help out a bit. We do get another ability score improvement. I th One thing that I'm thinking of doing now is to help increase our HP a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking of the Resilient Constitution feat. Mm. Is that... So that will give us proficiency in con saves and to even out our constitution. So that's going to be, I think it's going to be helpful, especially when Blade's singing. We're basically going to have a plus 12 concentration save, so it's going to be pretty hard to drop concentration. So that's going to be good. And now we're going to have 92 HP, which honestly isn't that bad for a wizard sure yeah it could be better but you're gonna have an amazing ac to really get through anyways so there there is that uh, although i guess if you really want to improve your hp you could always just pick up the tough feet to give plus two hp per level sure yeah that's always a, a go-to feat for sure not sure it quite fits with Yoda in that regard, right? He's he is a you know he is a little squishy and and small. That doesn't mean that he's not tough, right? But if he gets hit, then you know there there, there is something to say about about that. But yeah, I mean, in general, there's always the tough feet that you can always fall back on if you're nervous about your your HP max. So we do get. Um... Some more spell levels now. So we do at this level, um, we actually get six, seventh, and eighth level spells that we can choose from. So let's see what sixth level 
um, has to offer for us. Um, I kind of like the potentially the globe of invulnerability. Um, you know, like you mentioned earlier, if you were building a a Sith side kind of, you know, a Vader or a Palpatine, there's chain lightning here. Mm -hmm. um, the syndicates, you know, for for the dark side there also, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say if you're building more of a Sith. Um, I think contingency would be there. Contingency is still a good spell if you um, that I would always suggest to pick up though. Um, I would definitely say mass suggestion for sure. Yep. yep, that's another one there for sure for both Jedi's and Sith. <laughs> it's just what you're going to tell people with your mass suggestion that makes you a Jedi or a Sith. Right. Exactly. Um, also, maybe I could potentially see maybe a mental prison. Sure. Um, also, the other thing that I'll probably say is I highly suggest that you don't go with Tensor's transformation or Ta Tasha's otherworldly guys. They're not super great. Mm. especially Tensor's Transformation. But Trying to put those. Yep. Basically, a lot of this stuff, it's either not important for us, we already get, or something like that. Like, we already get that extra tax, so that isn't good. Um, we already have proficiency in con saving throws, so we're really only getting strength, and it's like, I'm not going to waste a six level spell on that. <laughs> you have proficiency in all armor and stuff like that, but armor takes time to put on. So to really get anything better than studded leather, it's going to take you like five to 10 minutes, which is going to put you at the end of your concentration anyways. Right. And then now that that's off, you don't have proficiency in that medium or heavy armor you have. So now you can't get spells. So that's mm. going to suck. Yeah, especially yep. for a full caster like a wizard that you are. The extra 2d12 per attack hit, that's pretty decent. Um, advantage on attack rolls, that's decent. Um, you do get 50 HP when you first start off, but honestly at this level, 50 temp HP is going to be shredded easily, to be honest. So I feel like advantage on attack rolls and extra 2d12 isn't enough for a for a 6 level spell, especially when you can get advantage just from flanking. But that's a topic for another video on how piss poor Tensor's transformation is. <laughs> um, however, for 7th level spells, let's see what Let's see what we have. I'm always going to suggest Force Cage. Well, that that's but, where plays into the, you know, it's got the name in it, so there is that, so. Yeah. So that kind of makes sense, to be honest. Um, other than that, I'm not sure if there's really anything thematic, per se. I mean, if nothing else, some Alacrum is good. But I'm not really seeing anything else that's thematic for seventh level spells. Yeah, there doesn't seem to be too many thematic things in in this list at this time. So, so I would probably just say Force Cage and some Lacrum, probably yeah. or Force Cage and whatever else, Plane Shift or whatever else you feel up to picking out. Yep, I would agree with that. Sort of a free choice there. For our eighth level. Let's see what we got. There's dominate a monster, so that's pretty th um, pretty thematic there. Um, mind blank, I think, is pretty thematic as well. Um, I think those are probably the best thematic spells, per se. Um, yeah, I would agree with that. I mean, you could 
you could Maybe. argue for illusionary illusionary illusory dragon mm -hmm. right because you're you're creating a, an illusion there but if you can't think of anything else there's maze <laughs> um, there's feeble mind yep somewhat think. go ahead Somewhat difficult to, to keep this on theme as we kind of go up in levels here because the the spells don't lend themselves easily to um, mapping back to force force type of uh, capabilities, right? So yeah. you start getting a, a few free choices uh, as 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 you level up here. Yeah, especially compared to lower levels where you had a lot of more a lot more options from like long strider to other things of that nature. Yeah. Uh, other than that, everything else is pretty wizardly, per se. Uh, pretty straightforward so far. Yeah. So let's take a look at um, what a level 20 character is going to look like. So what we want to do is we definitely want to go at least 17 levels. Um, but I do want to briefly discuss that I think going full 20 levels of Blade Singer is probably the way to go for Yoda, but at the same time, I could also potentially um, see the, the whole argument for 17 levels of Blade Singer with three levels of Eldritch Knight to, um, for a couple more low level spells action surge and stuff like that or as well as weapon bond to kind of get that force pull of your weapon to your hand mm. so i think those are some thematic options if you really want to go down down that route yeah that, that, that seems like an interesting route to go for sure yeah so i, I personally think that either which way is going to be pretty good um, for for yoda but for this build, let's go for 20 levels of Blade Singer. So first ability ASI that we get, I think um, one good thing is to plus two our dexterity. Mm. But the reason why is Yoda does, uh, is a master of, he primarily uses what is it, the fifth form I want to say. That incorporates a lot of acrobatic movements into lightsaber combat. So having a high dexterity really lends itself to that. Yeah, that would. Let's you jump off of stuff and twist and turn. And plus it's going to give you better initiative and better AC. On both while you're blade singing and while you're not blade singing. Yep. Always good things too. We do get spell mastery at 18th level. So... Pretty much um, what this does is we can choose a first and a second level wizard spell that's in our spell book and we can cast them at their lo lowest level without expending a spell slot as long as um, when we have them prepared. Um, so that could be fun, I guess. I'd say, I don't know, suggestion, shield maybe. Yeah, I mean, I think the second that second spell is probably uh, kind of a freebie there, but I definitely think suggestion is one that you want to be able to cast for free to kind of stay within the the theme, right? Yeah. As much as whole person or whole person also seems thematic, I think suggestion is just eking it out. Yeah. Yeah. That's sort of the iconic, the iconic scene, right? Mm -hmm. Next up. We do have our last ASI for this build. So there are, I think, a couple of options that you can go with. You could also always go for Warcaster, there's that. Um, you could always plus two your constitution or take the tough feed if you want to. There's a few other feeds, lucky feed, stuff like that, that you can go to. Me personally, I'm really, I'm really leaning towards just maxing out my decks at 20. Mm. Um, for reasons stated above at the 16th level ASI that fits the 
the form of lightsaber combat that Yoda typically utilizes. But there's other options if you don't, if you prefer not to max out your dexterity at 20. Yeah, I, I, I can't think of anything off the top of my head right now that I would suggest, so I, I think going dex right here is, is fine. Then yeah. at 20th level, we do get signature spells. Um, basically, choose two third level wills, um, wizard spells, and signature spells, and we can cast them once at third level without expanding the spell slot. Once per shorter, long rest. Um, of course, we don't. I didn't pick up any third level spells, um, but there are definitely a few spells that we did um, briefly go over when we talked about the spell at third level or fifth level, I should say. Excuse me. <laughs> um, that one could definitely go to like counter spells is, is always an option, mm -hmm. um, but there's a ton of different spells you could pick up, so it's up to you. Uh, on um, what you want to pick up. Yep, this seems like another free choice at this point based on the way we've been been going with this build, so. Yeah. So let's take a look at what a level 20 late singing Yoda looks like. Um, before that, let's just take a... Assuming that we're going to have studded leather armor real quick. That. I'm just going to go with the regular studded leather as as it's up to, it can be pretty situational depending on your campaign, what magic items you may or may not get. But with the standard studded leather, you're going to have a base AC of 17. But when your blade's singing, you're going to have an AC of 22. So that's pretty in line with a lot of the other upfront fighters, paladins, um, barbarian stuff like that so you're going to be pretty hard to hit granted if you get hit you only have 122 hp so that's going to be a trade-off but between a 22 ac 27 if you shield it's going to be pretty hard to actually get through your yeah. defense you're going to be dodging and weaving quite a bit yeah and honestly if, if you do decide to if the situation calls for it where you do need to stay back and do wizardly things, you could also use your action to take the dodge action, which gives enemies disadvantage to hit an AC of 22 or potentially 27. <laughs> yeah. Or with a concentration save of 13, which is not going to be easy to break it unless you get hit for some ridiculous, I don't know, 60 points of damage but honestly with 60 points of damage you have bigger things to worry about than you've got the concentration because that is half your health yeah exactly exactly so but um all in all i think it's pretty decent uh, while you're blazing and you, you will have 35 instead of 25 feet of movement uh, oh one thing to notice though is we do get ninth level spells now Mm. So just to take a look at what could be out there, I could potentially see an argument for maybe Foresight, maybe. Yeah. Um, I like Foresight. Um, I think there's a potential argument for Astral Projection at this level, right? You become one with the Force, and you're, you know, you Force Ghost out <laughs> an image of yourself. Yeah, uh, okay. And you could potentially say that that Anakin, Obi-Wan, and Yoda, or astral projection from the grave. Sure, yeah. Um, wish is there, but I'm not, that's probably not super thematic, but it's there. Yep. There are a lot of powerful spells at this, at this, this level, right? I, I think based on what we saw in 6th, 7th, and 8th, I think Foresight and Astral Projection fit much, much better from a thematic per perspective, but we've also also been pretty loosey-goosey on theme up to this point from a spell selection, so, you know, don't 
there's no reason not to continue that when you're picking your ninth level spell. Yeah. When making a Jedi like Yoda, you pretty much don't have too many thematic spells after about fifth, fourth or fifth level. Um, so go with, with whatever fits, uh, floats your boat, per se. Yep. But overall, this I think this is more or less what you can expect out of a Yoda. Um, as I said before, definitely try to get a Sunblade if you can. Um, and if your GM is not letting you get a Sunblade, that's the GM's fault as you're playing a Jedi and you should have a Sunblade. I mean, I, I would make the argument to see if you your your DM can just give you a, a lightsaber. Like, figure out how to actually build one in, in universe, but that's, you know, I push the boundaries there, so. <laughs> yeah, it might be easier to get a sun blade, but I do like your thought process with that. If you can convince your GM, building a lightsaber will be fun. And you're a wizard, you're going to have the intelligence to back it up. Yeah, I mean, there's magic rocks all over the place that you can use, just just like a kyber crystal, so. I, I think there's a good a good case to be made, and, and you know if you can't do a sunblade, then maybe you know, or even if your DM does give you the sunblade, maybe you can convince them further on to actually let you build some sort of real real lightsaber. So, yeah. So that, there's definitely endless possibilities with that. Um, maybe like have some sort of I think also having some sort of cloak like of protection, of displacement, spell resistance, whatever could also be extremely helpful because honestly I see a lot of like Jedi and stuff having some sort of like robe or cloak or something that they pretty much shed before actually starting combat. So I think having some sort of cloak or robe is going to be thematic. Just don't take it off because you'll lose the magical effects if you take it off. Well, then that just spoils the fun of being able to twirl it around and let it hit the ground when you reveal yourself as a Jedi. True. <laughs> One possibility that you could do is the Cape of Billowin is pretty thematic. The <laughs> common item, it's not going to do anything mechanically, but it's fun, and if it's... F figure out how to wear it underneath underneath a, a, a your... Or over the real cloak that gives you protections? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I see I see why not, right? Double cloak? Okay. Yeah. I mean... It'll, it'll let you make an entrance and protect you, so... I mean, samurai always have two swords with them, right? One to yeah. take off and one to protect themselves, right? There, there, there you go. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> So there's the reason why you can have two cloaks, everybody. It's the samurai way. Uh. Next up, we're making a, a samurai fighter build. Ah, uh, is that a little foreshadowing? Not foreshadowing, foresight. Oh my goodness, all right. Maybe it's time for us to close this one down, Nikai. <laughs> the puns have started. And, and if you're a dad out there, please comment down below with more dad jokes and puns like that. We would love to hear them. Nakai would be much appreciated, yes. And for all, all y'all folks out there, make a wisdom saving though versus suggestion, because that was suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> but um, other than that, that's pretty much it. Um, I think folks will have a lot of fun with that. I know I, I personally have fun building this character. Um, just make sure you know, um, just make sure the rest of the players are fine with this character coming in because it's Yoda. You're going to have to talk backwards with this character. <laughs> I, I think we do have to apologize that we didn't actually make a Yoda voice or speak like Yoda uh, in this, but, you know, goals for next time. Yeah. We just expected y'all to think that we're speaking backwards. <laughs> but all in all, that is this week's character deep dive, Yoda Man, a Blade Singer, and Jedi at Heart. 
Or if you wish, you can always name it Grogu instead of Yoda. There, there, there you go. But until next time, YouTube, keep y'all's lives geeky. Bye, everybody.